So welcome everybody to this latest GCSE video on 162 maths and in this video we'll be going over an AQA topic test on the higher syllabus with a focus of sequences. Now there will be a copy of the questions in the description below for you to have a go at and obviously then watch the video as we go through the answers. So let's get started on this AQA GCSE maths topic test on sequences on the higher syllabus. So looking at question one, it says here are the first five terms of a sequence, circle the expression for the nth term of this sequence. So we can see here that if we try and find the nth term, which is usually often the easiest way, so we can see we've got minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. So we're definitely gonna have minus two n. Then how do we get from minus two n, minus two to 15? Well, we need to add 17. So this is the nth term, which I then need to look at and it's going to be our third option. Question two, it says circle the value that is not a term in the geometric sequence series of nth term of two times three to the power n. So all we need to do here is just simply work out which value it is. So for example, you're typing in, um, and again, so already for this, all we need to then do is do, we've got 18, we've got 54, we've got 152 and 486. If we divide both numbers by two, then what we end up with is nine, and that's gonna be 27. Then we've got uh, four, uh, 75, 76, and well actually that's gonna be, yeah, 76. Four, and then this one is gonna be 243. Now what we're looking for is which of these is a power of three, and that's gonna be, well this is a power of three, this is a power of three, 76 is not a power of 3, so 152 is the one that is not a term in that geometric series. For question 3, it says the nth term of a sequence A is 2n plus 3, and the nth term of sequence B is 5n minus 4. Work out two terms that are in both sequences. Now, in terms of 2n plus 3, well, to work out the first term, we just simply put our finger over n and we get 5, so that's the first term. And then we add whatever the coefficient of n is going to be, so it's going to be going up in 2s. So I've got 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, uh, 15, 17. So basically it's every odd number starting with 5. Then if I then do 5n minus 4, so again here what I've got is I've got 1 and the as my first term, and then it's going to go up in 5, so I've got 6. 11, uh, 16, 21, 26, uh, 31, 36, and so on. Now in terms of this, I can see that my first term is going to be 11. And then the next one is, well, that's going to be 19, 21. So the next two terms, so 11 and 21. So again, there's a, obviously there's quite a few different combinations you can have for this, but I would say anything along those lines would be absolutely fine. For question four, it says the nth term of sequence P is a n plus b, and the nth term for sequence Q is b n plus n b n plus a. Show that the sequence both start with the same letter. So basically, they both start when n equals 1. So in terms of sequence P, when n equals 1 I've got a times 1 plus b which simplifies to give me a plus b and with q I'm going to end up with b times 1 plus a which is also a plus b. So you can see here that these are both the same. Now in terms of this it says that the second term in sequence P equals the third term in sequence q. So what I need to do is sub n equals 2 into P and this one is sub n equals 3 into Q and they both equal each other. So looking at question uh, this first of sequence P and substituting n equals 2 I get 2a plus b and then and that equals when I substitute 3 into this so it's going to be 3b plus a and then as they're both equal to each other, what I then need to do is simplify this. So here, if I take the b over to this side and the a over to that side, I'm left with a equals 2b, which is what they've wanted me to show. For question five, it says the nth term of a sequence is 12 minus n all over n squared. Work out the first term of the sequence that is a recurring decimal. 
So for this, what I've got to do is substitute a equals 1. So I've got 12 take away 1 over 1 squared, which is 11 over 1, which is 11, not a reoccurring decimal, so that's not it. When n equals 2, I end up with 12 take away 10 over 4, which is, I don't know why I've put 10 there, it should be 2. So the answer is 10 which I get 10 over 4, which is 2.5, which is not a reoccurring decimal. When n equals 3, I get 12 take away 3 over 9, so that's 9 over 9, which is 1. When n equals 4, I get uh, 12 take away 4 divided by 16, which gives me 8 over 16, which is 0 0.5, so still not there yet. Then if we then try n equals 5, well, I end up with 12 minus 5 over 25, which is uh, going to be 7 over 25. And 7 over 25 leaves me with 0.28, which is not a recurring decimal. And so the next one I then do is n equals 6, in which I get 12 minus 6 over 36 which simplifies to be 6 over 36, which is 1 over 6. And there we have our winner, because 1 over 6 is equal to 0 0.16 recurring. So looking at the question, it says work out the first term of the sequence that is a recurring decimal, and it's going to be our sixth term. And moving on to question 6, it says this nth term of a sequence is n squared times n plus 1. Show that the third term of the sequence is 36. So the third term is basically when n equals 3. So all I need to do is sub n equals 3 into this expression. So I get 3 squared times 3 plus 1, which is 9 times 4, which is 36. And then the next one says work out the tenth term of the sequence. Well, that's going to be 10 squared times 10 plus 1, which is 100 times 11, which is 1100. Moving on to question 6c, it says prove that all the terms in the sequence are even. So in terms of this, what we need to do, well, let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got n squared and then n plus 1. Now, if we expand the brackets out, which isn't really essential, but we can do, so n cubed plus n squared. Now, when n is an even number, then n cubed is going to be an even n squared will be an even, and an even plus an even equals an even number. When n is odd, then n cubed is going to be an odd number, n squared is going to be an odd number, and an odd plus an odd gives you an even answer. So there we have showed that Regardless of for all terms of the sequence, the answer is going to be even. Moving on to question 7, it says that the first four terms of a quadratic sequence are 9, 23, 45 and 75. And the question is asking us to work out the next two terms of the sequence. So let's have a look at what the difference is going to be first. So here we've got between 9 and 23 is going to be uh, 14. The difference between these two is 21, and the difference between these two is going to be 20, uh, sorry, it's going to be 30. Then, in terms of working out the difference between each of these, well, that should be 22, sorry, and coming from here, so what we've got is we've got a difference of 8 going up, so the next difference then is going to be 8, so that's going to be 38. And the next difference between that then is going to be 46. So looking at 75 plus 38 is 113. And 113 plus 46 gives me an answer of 159. So 113 and 159. Now the next question then says work out the nth term of the sequence. Now if I just write down what these numbers are, so I can have them all on screen, so 23, 45, 75, and now I know that the double difference is 8, so that means 4n squared is going to be in the formula. So when n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, then 4n squared is going to be 4, uh, 2 squared is 4, times 4 
is going to give me 16. 3 times 3 is 9, times 4 is 36, 4 times uh, 64 that one's going to be. And then what I then need to do is work out the difference between this and this. So that's plus 5. That is plus 7. That is plus 9. And that is plus 11. Now what I then need to do is treat these differences as a different sequence. So here I've got 5, 7, 9, 11. So the nth term of this is going to be 2n plus 3. So all I then need to do is then combine these two equations to get all these two sections together in which I've got 4n squared plus 2n plus 3. And there is my nth term sequence. And that concludes the end of this topic test.